In this week's video I'll show you how I went from a few parts pulled out from a broken office printer to a fully built robot scale model. Welcome to Cut. Transform Glue. This project took me a couple of months to complete, so grab some popcorn, sit back and relax, cause this is going to be a long one. First up, the body. Thanks to a large collection of parts and a bit of luck, the body of this robot came together pretty quickly. Pieces fit almost perfectly, which is pretty rare. I made the basic body shape using three or four big pieces, held together with CA glue and a lot of baking soda, and some hot glue to reinforce everything from the inside. And then came the first weapons of this beast, made from a couple of really good looking bits found in a big old printer. They looked so good, and that's actually when the dagger name idea came to me. To make my life easier during the painting process, I like to keep most pieces separated, they are much easier to handle that way. My current favorite way to do this is by using some fake Lego bricks, that way I can simply attach everything later up to a certain weight limit of course. So I attached a piece to the robot's body using some 3D printed frames to help the adhesion and did the same thing on the weapon pieces. But if this is a dagger, it of course needs a blade, in this case a cannon, so I dove into my collection of tubes and rings looking for the perfect shapes. It's also ideal to keep the cannon detachable from the body, just like the two energy pods on the sides. So the first thing I made was an attachment point for it on the body. And the way I did it was by combining that black shape in the middle with a 3D printer part that matched the angle on the front of the robot. Next I added a ring, also 3D printed, and used the cap from a soap bottle to make the connection. Then I worked on the cannon, combining some really good looking tubes from my collection. A final piece was added to the nozzle and it was pretty much finished. Now, even though the pieces fit so nicely together, the bottom of the robot had some issues that needed attention. And I took care of all of them using some custom made 3D printed pieces, turning those problems into opportunities to add detail and improve the model. Like right here, where I combined a Gribbly from my collection with an angled printed piece, creating a super cool air vent on both sides. This right here is where 3D printing really shines. The back of the body piece also had some weird shapes and leftover parts, which I simply covered with a piece of styrene and another sci-fi toy part. I simply love adding air vents to my models, think they make the robots look so powerful. So I made another angle printed piece that, when combined with a small keycap from a calculator, added some cool details on the top of the robot. And whenever I felt an area was too empty, I went ahead and added a few shapes, whether griblies, printed pieces or even laser cut acrylic shapes. On the back of the robot I had earlier added an array of holes, creating an upward facing fixed missile pod, but I wanted it to look even better so I redrew the holes and replaced them with some plastic beads. And some baking soda will make sure this stays in place and cover any remaining gaps. Now as I said, the side pods are energy weapons, so I figured they get hot and need some kind of cooling system, so I made them some cool looking heat sinks. And with that, the body of the dagger was pretty much finished. A 
around the time I finished the body of the dagger and was ready to start working on the waist and legs, I got a broken house fan. It was my first time taking one apart and I doubted it had any useful parts but I decided to try anyways. And I'm so glad I did because I found the perfect part for this project. I began by removing some extra features that would get in the way and then I started taking measurements of it. With these measurements I 3D modeled a piece to go over it, closing the hole on the top and creating an axle point for the connection to the body. gave it a good sanding to remove the print layer lines and started adding some extra detail griblies. One of my favorite pieces are keyboard keycaps, they're full of detail and precisely made. I usually use them upside down since the inside looks way more interesting than the outside and this one came from the same printer that gave me the energy weapon piece. Another fake Lego brick was added to the back of the waist structure where I later I'll, as always, install a battery pack. Most of my robots have battery packs, of course. From there I went on a quick detailing session, adding small bits and pieces all over the thing. And once the waist structure was finished, it was time to create a connection to the body. which I made simply using a tube piece from another printer. These are strong and reliable, so I knew it was a safe choice. Now to keep it securely attached to the body, I printed a ring and installed it in the bottom of the robot. These kinds of processes might sound like an overkill, but over the years I became a fan of strong and durable connections, so my models stay firm and stable. With the waist finished, I could start on the next big challenge, the legs. Into designing the shape, size and most importantly the geometry, I resorted to good old cardboard. I cut multiple strips to a certain thickness and stacked them all using double-sided tape. Then I cut it into smaller segments and used soft aluminum wire to make it possible. That's when I decided to switch from my usual leg geometry to a chicken walker configuration, which better matched the model's weight distribution. With the geometry and size defined, the assembly madness could finally begin. Legs are usually the most challenging parts of any project. They need to look good, be functional and be the right size. I know I'm just making robot models and having fun, but I like to imagine these robots could really walk if they were real. That's just how I like to do things. And so I take those details into consideration when I'm designing them. Because of that, there's usually a lot of back and forth during the leg building process. I like to be able to change and replace parts if something feels off. From the outside, it might look not as quick or optimized as the body build process, for instance. So this is why I see a lot of different pieces being combined, where I could probably print a single big piece. The use of styrene over printed parts is intentional though, the surface looks better and it's much more durable than PLA, so I always try to keep that in mind during my build process. After a couple of days of work and going back and forth, the first leg segment was finished.
but the leg saga is far from over. Another big challenge is the joints. Not that my models will be posable after the painting process, but I like to keep that ability up until the last second. With that in mind, and inspired by Wi-Fi antenna elbows, I made my own multi-directional joints, the best I've made so far because of the incredible freedom of movement they offer. The STL files are available for my Patreon, so check the links below if you're interested in that. But yeah, with the joints ready to go, I could move on to the next leg segment. Now for the axle that connects the legs to the hip, I went with a simple solution from my Gribble collection, a small ball joint from security cameras or sensor light switches, easy and ready to use. I made a custom piece to hold half of it, which would attach to the leg side. And then I replaced the plastic shaft with a metal rod before attaching the other half the ball part to the waist piece. It seems like a more reliable solution. Then I just had to attach the thing to the waist, where I installed a big acrylic disc for a strong gluing point. And the result was just as I expected, with the ball joint on the waist I could put the robot on a cool stance. Next up, the last leg segment and the feet. Which I'll make using this piece from telephone lines that I can constantly find on the streets. Another coat of primer and this thing is almost ready for the painting process. And that's cause I think that just like his older brother, the Flamingo, this thing needs a radar dish, so let's make one. For the painting of this mech, I went with a super simple color scheme, black for most pieces and pink as the accent color. Like the replacement parts I always like to add to my models, which I painted using nail polish. If you're an old subscriber, you'll know that painting is where the suffering begins. It's tough on the body and paint is super expensive around here, so I don't have easy access to most hobby brands. That means I'm always testing and trying new ways to paint my models faster and get better results. So far, using matte spray paint as a base color has helped a ton, and nail polish seems to be a great solution for small and medium sized pieces.
After finishing the base colors I started working on the weathering, where I beat this model up to make it look lifting, like it went through a couple of battles. For that I used my favorite chipping technique, where I actually scratch and chip the color layer. Right here I'm creating some extra delicate panel lines that, along with the real deep ones, will make the model look more realistic, like it's actually made of multiple parts combined together. On top of that comes the wash, which honestly is the only fun part of the painting process for me, where I get to make this model look dirty. Since I'm using nail polish, which is basically enamel, I'll go back to using an oil wash. And the idea of a wash is pretty simple, you make the model dirty where it needs to be and then you clean it, repeating as many times as needed. The dirt builds up and makes the details really pop, which is why it is so fun, and the model goes from looking like a toy to a miniature robot, always a delightful transformation. And this is The Dagger, a project I started inspired by a couple of pieces that fit so well together and just to have some fun, but one who grew to be one of my favorite builds ever, a walking cannon with two powerful energy weapons that, after the painting process, ended up looking lived in and robust. Couldn't be happier with this one. I'm already thinking about the next chicken walker I'll make. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for future projects. This channel runs on curiosity, recycled parts and the support of people who believe in independent work. If you enjoy seeing things built from scratch and ideas turned into reality, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching.